Hi, question number six taken from October 2015, A level maths HSC P3. A small ring of mass 0.024 kg is threaded on a fixed rough horizontal rod. A light inextensible string is attached to the ring and the string is pulled with a force of magnitude 0.195 Newton at an angle of theta with a horizontal where sine theta is equal to 5 over 13. When the angle is below the horizontal, the ring is in limiting equilibrium in diagram 1. Find the coefficient of friction between the ring and the rod for the first part and the second part when the angle theta is above the horizontal in figure 2. The ring moves. Find the acceleration of the ring. Okay, this is what we have. Now remember the weight of the object is 0.024 G Newton. We have a contact force so I'm happy to resolve vertically. So R minus these two forces down is going to be R equal to 0.024 G plus 0.195 times the sine of theta because it doesn't contain the angle moving downward. So R is going to be G is 10 so 10 times it's going to be 0 0.24 plus 0 0.195 times uh, sine of theta is given in the question as 5 over 13. So R is going to be 0 0.24 plus 0 0.195 times 5 over 13 and that's going to give us 0 0.35, 315 Newton. Okay, now that we know this, um, we can resolve horizontally. What if we do that? So horizontally we have 0 0.195 times the cos of the angle cos of theta minus the force of friction what is the force of friction force of friction is mu r basically so minus mu r minus mu r is equal to zero okay because this is limit, limiting equilibrium, that's why it is equal to zero. So we need to find coefficient of friction. This can go on the other side. So we've got then mu r is equal to 0 0.195 times cos of theta. Now we know that sine of theta is 5 over 13. Therefore, cos of theta is going to be 13 to the square minus 5 to the square is 144, and the square root of that is 12, and then it's over 13. So times 12 over 13. And now um, we need to find the coefficient of friction. So R is, so sorry, it's going to be, then mu is going to be 0 0.195 times 12 over 13 and all divided by, divided by R. So 0 0.195 times 12 divided by 13. So that's going to be 0 0.18 divided by 0 0.315 as found earlier on. So divided by 0 0.315 is going to give us this much. Therefore, the coefficient of friction mu is going to be um, 0 0.571 to 3SF. So here we are for the first part of the question. Now for the second part, we are told that the ring has moved and it is now in this position with theta. This is 0 0.195. Okay, so again, we can resolve vertically. This is all 0 0.024 G Newton. So if we resolve, resolve vertically, we have these two forces minus this is going to be equal to zero. So R um, plus 0 0.195 times the uh, sine of theta doesn't contain the angle minus uh, 0 0.024 G is equal to 0 so R is going to be this can go on the other side 0 0.024 G minus 0 0.195 times the sine of theta 5 over 13 okay so all of that's going to be equal to R therefore R is going to be, let's do it in our calculator,
and g is 10 so this is going to be 0 0.24 minus 0 0.075 And therefore, the contact, I mean, sorry, the, I mean, R is going to be 0 0.165 Newton. Now, we need to find the acceleration of the ring as it moves. So we're going to resolve now horizontally. So horizontally, what do we have? Horizontally, we have this force here minus the force of friction. So we're going to find the net force. We should know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. What is the force? 0 0.195 times the cos of theta because now it contains the angle minus the force of friction. Force of friction is mu r is equal to mass times acceleration. The mass is 0 0.024 times the acceleration. r has been found to be this so we can now 0 0.195 times uh, 12 over 13 okay minus mu r and mu is uh, 0 0.571 times r 0 0.165 is equal to mass times acceleration acceleration times 0 0.024 so let's do this piece in our calculator here 0 0.195 times uh, 12 okay, divided by 13 is this much minus okay, so point zero nine four two one five and divided by this is going to give us the acceleration Okay, divided by 0.024. Acceleration is 3.57 meters per second per second. So that's the second part of the question. And I'm sure you've been able to get some help out of this. Take care.